Hi, and welcome back to the channel. This is part two of the barn series, and if you've missed part one, then make sure you go and check this link out up here. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint that great red barn. Wanna see how it's done? Stay tuned and let's get started. At this point for the video, you should have a barn built. If not, do make sure you go to the link above and follow along to see how you can build this particular barn. To get the painting going, the first thing you wanna make sure you have is your base coat on. And to do that, we're actually gonna be using two separate base coats. With a mix of equal parts Mod Podge and black acrylic paint, you're going to paint inside the window openings as well as on the stonework of the barn and the roof of the barn. You wanna make sure that when you're painting, you get into every little nook and cranny possible as well. You're also going to use the same mix on the open hayloft area. You wanna make sure you're also using a nice flat brush for this so you can keep the black paint within the opening of the hayloft itself. On the rest of the barn, what you're gonna use is an equal parts mix of burnt umber and Mod Podge. And again, it's the same idea. This time you're putting it onto the trim work as well as to the side panels of the barn. And again, make sure you get into every nook and cranny. Once the base coat has dried, we're gonna move on to painting this in different sections. The first one we're gonna look at is the stonework. Then we're gonna take a look at painting the barn wood. Then we're gonna look at doing the roof. And finally, we'll look at doing the trim work. So to start off with the stone, what we're gonna use is coffee latte, golden sunset, light mocha, and sun-kissed peach. With the coffee latte and a wide brush, you're going to dry brush over just the stone area of your barn. You wanna be light handed with this. You're not looking for full coverage. You just wanna start applying that color onto the stones and make sure you get everything on all sides. Once you're done with the coffee latte, you will then move on to Golden Sunset. It does help to blot this down on a paper towel before you go across. And I know this looks bright, but trust me on this, it will help enhance the colors of the stone when you are done. Again, get all sides of your stonework with this color. Next, we will move on to the light mocha. And again, you're gonna be even more light-handed with this color. Basically, as you go up in color tones, you're going to go lesser and lesser with the amount you put onto the stonework. And when that is done, we are going to round it off with sun-kissed peach, same thing, but as you can see, not as much of this color is applied to the stonework. Now we're gonna move on to the barn wood, and I'm not talking about the trim work, I'm talking about the sides of the barn. So you're gonna first start with Tuscan Red, and then you're gonna want ripe tomato. To apply, you have a couple options. You can go over with a smaller flat brush and get into the finer detail work, but making sure you're not getting into those deep grooves. That's one way to apply this. Or you can use a wider brush to get a wider area covered. I did ended up doing a combination of the two. I used the smaller brush in the more narrow areas. Then I moved over to a larger brush and used that in the wider areas. What I did here though, is instead of having it lay flat on top of the woodwork, I actually held it perpendicular. You're gonna be doing the same thing with the ripe tomato once your first color of Tuscan Red has completely dried. And as you can see here, it really brings out the detail of the wood detail that you've put in from the previous video. And at this point, this is what your barn should look like. Let's start moving on now to the roof. The roof is gonna start with this pewter gray from Apple Barrel. And this is really the only color you're gonna use as its base color. And we're gonna enhance the look of it using further dry brushing and washes. What you're gonna do with a wide brush is start applying this pewter gray to the entire roof area. This means the sides of the roof as well as the rail of the roof. You may also find you wanna put two coats of this gray on. Also, don't forget to work on those edges because you're gonna have nooks and crannies that you're gonna need to get into. And you also wanna make sure you get underneath a little bit where it is visible. In the end, you want the pewter gray to be a nice solid color. And it is okay if there's just a little bit of the black base coat showing through, but the gray is the color you really want to have noticeable. Now let's take a look at the washes since we've completed three of the areas that we want painted. The trim work we're actually going to save for the very end. So what we're gonna use here is Citadel's Agrax Earthshade as well as Army Painter's Master Series Paint and I'm just using their black wash. It's a great matte black wash. For the Agrax Earthshade, you're going to apply this to the stonework of your barn as well as the roof of the barn. So when it comes to the stonework, you wanna make sure you get into all the nooks and crannies 
However, when it comes to the roof, and this is important, you're going to use this as a weathering effect. So you want to have it start up at the top and then streak it down the sides of your roof and make sure this dries completely before you do anything else in these areas. Then you're going to move on to using the black and you're going to put this onto the wood area, the redwood area of your barn and get that all covered and make sure it's getting into the nooks and crannies to bring back out those details that you've put into the wood. When the Agrax is dry on the roof, you are then going to move on to Citadel's Seraphim Sepia and you're going to do the same idea and this time you're going to kind of place in the areas where you don't have the Agrax. Again, this is creating a weathering rusting effect is essentially what we're going for for this tin roof. And here is how everything should look at this point of our process. Once the washes have all dried, we're going to go back in and start doing some highlights. So for the red barn area, we're going to use this apple red as our highlighting color. To highlight with this apple red, you're going to go back to that nice wide brush and basically just brush over the red barn wood areas. You don't have to be as heavy handed with this. You actually want this to be light handed, but it brightens up the red a little bit so it doesn't look so dark and deep in tone. And this is really what's going to give it that nice red barn look to it in the long run. Now for the stonework, we're going to go back to light mocha and we're going to do one last very light handed dry brushing over the stonework area. Again, at this point, you don't want to be heavy handed. You really just sort of want to highlight the highest points of the stonework around the base of your barn. It's at this point the roof is really going to start taking shape and you want to use this antique white. And you are going to be using a dry brush technique with this and what you first want to do is highlight the raised ridges of the roof. That's important. You may even find you want to go over a little bit, let it dry just a little bit and then go over it again just to really get that antique white color popping. But here's where things are going to get a little different. Make sure this area dries and then what you're going to do is go back in with your brush and with a very small amount of this paint on your brush, you're actually going to work it into the lowered grooves of the roof to give it that color as well. And what this is going to do, it's going to tone down the washes just a bit, but it's also going to make all the colors blend together so it looks like it's a more natural state of a tin roof that's been weathered outside. Now before you put that antique white away, you are actually going to use this on the trim work. And the reason why I have saved the trim work for last is because it is a far harder deal trying to cover up any red that would have gotten onto the trim work ahead of time than it is to just carefully paint this on once everything else has been painted and treated with its washes. To do this, I recommend a very narrow, flat brush so you can carefully work this color onto the trim work. It is also up to you if you want to just do the surfaces or if you also want to try and get around the edges. I will say if you work more on the inside of the edges, it will take a little bit longer. But essentially you want to get a nice even coat of this antique white onto your barn trim. Since I'm always a fan of weathering and moss and mildew on outside buildings, what I'm going to do is give this sort of a moss-like growing on the wood and stonework by using this olive green. And what you're going to do is take your brush that has been cleaned, you're going to dab it into your paint, dab it on top of a paper towel, and then stipple this color very lightly onto the lower end of your trim work as well as the stone area of the barn. Going back to that same Army Painter black wash, I thinned it a little bit with distilled water and then I put it over the white trim work areas. And this is going to age the wood. Once you have applied this wash, just let everything dry completely before we move on to fine tuning the last finishing touches on the trim work. Now that it's dry, you're going to go use this vanilla ice cream and you're going to dry brush along your trim work area, making sure to highlight those edges to really bring out the details of the corner trim work, of the door work, and everything like that. If at any point you slip and you get this white onto other areas of your barn and you don't want it there, quickly take a clean brush dipped in clean water and you should be able to just brush it away and then blot it gently with a paper towel. In the end, this is how your trim should end up looking when you're done with all the different steps that we use for it. Once again, we're going to keep using the vanilla ice cream and this time we're going to paint it onto the window frames that we had used before in the build section. So what you want to do with this paint color is get it onto the window frames. However, it does not have to be a perfect coating. In fact, it's okay if a little bit of the gray is peeking through because it's going to mimic the look of the trim work of the barn that you just did. When that dries, you can go back again with that 
black wash that's been thinned out and put it on top of the windows and that's just to sort of bring out those finer details that may have been lost a little bit by applying the antique white and you want to make sure everything's dry before we move on to doing the next step. Now we're going to apply the panes to the frames and to do this you're just going to want your low temp hot glue gun and what I did was run a very thin bead across the sash in the middle and then you're going to place your pane on top of the frame where it belongs. And then once that's connected to it, I then put a thin bead on either end of the window just to make sure that the pane is completely connected top, middle, and bottom. You can, of course, opt to use different glues. You could use a white glue, you could use a craft tacky glue, and that type of thing. I, however, just decided to use the hot glue gun because I was pressed for time and I wanted to get it done. Once you have the pane glued onto the frame, what you want to do is just go back to your openings and test fit them. Now, as I mentioned in the other video, hindsight, I realized the paint had caused the foam to expand a little bit, so I did have to go back in and trim out some excess foam for these frames to fit. Because I had to do that, I then had to go back in with the matte black acrylic paint just to paint over the white areas of the foam and the pink areas of foam that had gotten exposed. It was a quick and easy fix. Now to attach these, you're gonna use your hot glue gun, low temp hot glue gun, and just run a bead around all openings of the window area. And then you're just going to carefully place your frame inside, press down gently to make sure it adheres, remove any wisps or strands, and that should get your window frame glued into your barn. Now, if you have any of those wisps left inside, it actually works and starts looking like spider webs. So that's something to keep in mind and not get too worried about. And now we are at the home stretch with the hayloft. What you're going to do is go back to that pewter gray and with a flat head brush, you're basically going to put a very faint bit of this paint on the edges where the trim work is around the hayloft and pull that color into the center of the hayloft, allowing it to get lighter and lighter so that it fades from the edges of the trim into the center of the open hayloft. This just starts creating the illusion that there's more to the hayloft than just a flat black piece of paper. You will find it helps to move the barn around as you're painting the hayloft so you can get to those angles a little bit more easily and have a more natural pull to the paint. When you're done, you want to have your hayloft looking something like this. Now let's add the hay. Using the Vallejo crushed grass, you're going to use a brush and you're basically going to blot this onto the hayloft area and you want this to be a thick coat. While this paint can be used to be very thin coatings, I found if you let it collect up on itself, it gives a very pile of hay-like look to it. So you're going to put this on in a thick coating, work your way across the bottom of the hayloft. You can give it different heights and levels if you want. It also helps to dab up and down just to bring more of the texture up, but you want this to dry completely before we go back in and do a highlight over this particular paint. When it's dry, you're going to use Golden Sunset and just very lightly dry brush over the high areas of this texture paint. And what happens is it turns it into looking like piles of hay up in your hayloft, a very quick and easy solution. You could also opt to use different colors like lighter browns or straw-like colors if you so wish. But I found the combination of the crushed grass and the Golden Sunset were just right for what I wanted to have in the long run. And now this brings us to our final look. This is one of those projects where I decided to divide the two up because the build and the painting both had a lot of detail work to it. Plus it gives you the option of using one or the other if you're wanting to apply this to different projects of your own. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. I will do my best to answer them for you. You can also contact me with any at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. If this is something you found helpful and useful, please feel free to hit that like button. And while you're here, you're welcome to subscribe. Have a great day, everyone, and I will share something with you very soon. Take care. And the furnace kicked on. Yeah. It's the growling beast. The things we do to record. We wait for the furnace to start plugging along. And then we record the intro. But only then. Fun. Still waiting. It stopped. Okay, cool. Here, easy.
if you've missed part one, well, do make sure you go. Hi. Do make sure you jump up over here to this link. That one. <laughs> okay. Sorry. 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 Yo, I'm gonna be showing you how to dip up. <clears throat> I'm gonna be showing you how to sound like a frog. Give me the frog. I'm gonna show you how to dip, dip, dip. I, You know, I'm just rambling. I think the first take was fine. I don't know why I do this. I do like five takes, just in case another takes better. And sometimes the takes aren't all that great. And no, I haven't had any caffeine yet. This is me on adrenaline and stress and trying to get ready. Not even kidding. Bye. <laughs>